Second thing is uh, from, again, three countries, and we have, uh, according to um, this database we're creating and the website we're creating through, um, uh, with Matt Wolf's help, about 1,260 pieces that are uploaded already and are going to go onto the site for that part. Um, this is the kind of stuff that's documentation. Research reports, and there were some very good ones that were provided basis <coughs> for the government work. Policy statements that were developed so that you had that data. They had strategic plans that referred to policy and a lot of program materials and say uh, tourism uh, materials and things that would refer to the policy. Um, these are some things that in, in going through the country so far, uh, you know, again, you try to look at themes, you try to see areas, but I wanted this one was probably to kind of show the filtering down of information to the local level and where it is and where it isn't. And so we looked at uh, things that we could see that in a lot of countries there is a state and local buy-in. And you could see that like in, in a place like Australia, the national had these policies and you could see them repeatedly offered and mentioned all, all along. But if we went into another country like Costa Rica, whatever the national was doing, the uh, local wasn't. You know, and there was no real connect. So these are some things I looked at. Uh, the push toward participation. Um, sometimes we saw policy confusion and disconnect and, and difficulties enforcing these policies locally. That they sounded good at the national level, it just didn't come down to get programs going. Um, a lot of times there were a lot of lobbying as far as initiating policy. And then we did see at the local level, the tourism role was assumed, but it was never clear and often it was an economic generator concept of sport events and, and big events toward tourism, but tourism wasn't connected in it very well. It was either a separate ministry or it just wasn't connected. Um, then the policy statements appeared through all kinds of ways. Uh, at the national level, they would develop certain programmatic literature, some was very, very detailed, uh, method books and, and all kinds of things and others was really terse. Uh, but they had research to back policy in most of the countries, which it, it was good. They, they did, however, have campaign marketing on certain groups that appeared weak and not followed through with at the local level. That it sounded good up here, but you know, it would be like our President's Council on Fitness and Sport. It sounds good up here. Whatever goes on in the schools, they still remember doing the mile runs and the push-ups and whatever, and it just doesn't manifest itself into changing a lifestyle. Um, so those kinds of things. And then the commitment area. Not always sure if it was clear and strong or coordinating was not so good. Yeah, maybe there was inconsistency with message. Definitely duplication of services at the state level and local level. But they did te seem to have databases of different groups that they would use uh, to communicate with. And in Australia, for example, Active Australia, has a logo and it showed up at YMCA's and at schools and, and clubs and different organizations so you could see that uh, there had been a certain amount of uh, you know communication with these groups to get things going. Uh, another thing not mentioned here but definitely important was training. The government tended to provide training and funding to be incentives for local organizations to do some of these programs. But in countries where that wasn't really forthcoming they did, it didn't, you know, travel down. Um, the other thing is some key points. Uh, in these different countries, there are a wide variety of approaches, either a very strong approach or just a very laissez-faire. Uh, the state was very willing and varied with effectiveness in implementing the national policy. Um, and often that was connected to dollars. Uh, the local had the strongest use of resources, and uh, they, any time there were resources, the local would find a way of using it. So they, they, the money factor was definitely important. Here. We did see tourism uh, entering into this lit literature. Economic generator role would vary in terms of comprehensiveness uh, versus uh, uh, you know, a checklist for increased participation. Um, so you know, sometimes it would be, we're going to have these 10 events, and that was supposed to generate tourism, but it just didn't say how it would. And then there was a definite emphasis in most countries on fitness and prevention in youth, 
there was uh, always something that had to do with their health. And environmental protection, uh, there was some note that it conflicts with the whole economic generator thing. So do you have a, a park or do you have an arena? And some of those things were things that were conflicting. And the last thing is just in looking at comparative areas. These were some things we looked at initially. And then there's some themed areas that are, um, are uh, have emerged from this. Uh, the model concept, levels of government, population density, the kind of sport programs, the centrality of the population, for example in Hong Kong, uh, 80 or 90 percent of the population is urban, and then I think 10 percent is rural, and that has some effect on how that gets out. You know, it's all urban, it really doesn't get out to the world very much. Um, pol policies in the education system we took a, a look at, and often some of these policies would be greatly manifested by going through the school system, but in other countries it didn't. Um, and the funding, uh, national incentives, uh, state incentives, and local tourism taxes were different ways that funding took place. And finally, the training and how it was viewed in these different countries uh, would be targeted to sport organizations, not necessarily park and recreation departments, um, and was perceived as strong or weak in these different countries. And we're going to look into that a little bit more. Um, so, you know, some of the key points is really um, I, uh, the socio-contextual keyword documentation uh, is going to be, was enabled through the, the coding, but it's going to be more enabled through the MP book. So I use some of those charts are really to help us get keywords loaded into the system. Um, you'd also say the cultural context was either pronounced in one type of, a, say, a, a culture or blended. So in a place like Hong Kong, You've got a European culture, you've got an Asian culture, you've got a multi-diverse culture. But what were the strong areas? Well, more of a blended system. Um, but you could go to another country like Costa Rica, and it was definitely a more Latin and less of a, a culturally diverse area. <coughs> so it's more pronounced. Um, mostly urban environments, and in, in all cases, you know, this whole diversity element was in all these policies. It was either concern about the elderly or the, um, you know, people who can't, who are excluded from the system, and, and so on. And these are some themes that are going to drive the next process that we, I found. I mentioned the context as supporting findings and the themes, but then also characteristics of the policy, what the intention of the policy is. Um, sometimes it was simply getting elite athletes. Other times it was broad-based for mass participation. Um, organizational structure uh, varied. Program delivery impacts, uh, trying to get into those a little bit more. And then some of the issue areas that I mentioned are set, definitely things we'll try to pull more information out of. Uh, finally, just a couple things. Uh, all of this, you know, re, uh, look at policy is that the United States actually doesn't have a policy. Okay, so it, this has informed us to the extent that you could inform, and I think it is developing policy more through the health issues that are happening. Maybe there's a little bit more governmental effort going on. Um, Canada, however, follows the European model a lot, so. But they recently formed all their efforts into a health promotion ministry. So that's kind of a um, conglomerate of all those efforts. Findings for the U.S. show fragmentation of agencies that deliver any of these areas. And that might be something that has to be changed uh, in order to help our, our health situation and other things.